today's results. It's been six months, but the number's still the same. There's no way people could sustain life there. Not humans, no. Sir, there's a call for you from the head office. Put it through. The destruction of Raccoon City was the end of an era, and it became the start of a new resident of direction. The series would go through a downward slope after Raccoon City had been destroyed, and it would become more action-packed and less frightening. It's clear today that Raccoon City has always been the location that everyone wants the next Resident Evil game to take place in. Well, let's take a look at what Raccoon City would be like if it was abandoned instead of eradicated. First off, the army managed to block out every entrance and exit to Raccoon City. The only way out was by escaping underground or by taking a plane or helicopter. But most underground exits had already been destroyed, but with every exit completely blocked, then no one and no creature could escape this abandoned city. So many victims paid the price for staying put and expecting help to arrive. But with the city still intact, survivors could still be hiding hoping for someone to rescue them. This could give us a chance to explore the city and search for survivors. Imagine if we could revisit a numerous amount of locations. Which locations would you choose? The Raccoon City Park would certainly be one of the most dangerous locations to visit. It would look like a jungle with most POWs which would be lurking nearby, making them earn the name Hunters. But if that's what will become of the Raccoon City Park, what could we expect from the Raccoon City Zoo? We've seen the T-Virus infect zoo animals in the Outbreak series, and we've seen zoo animals get infected with the G-Virus in the comics by William Birkin himself. Either would result in an extremely dangerous area to revisit. The city streets would be flooded with zombies, including packs of Cerberus. No location would be considered to be safe, unless groups of survivors have managed to create a sanctuary but those can only hold on for a limited time. There was once a concept for a new Resident Evil game that would concentrate on revisiting the Spencer Mansion. Even after it was destroyed, many areas would still be intact, but vines and plants would mostly cover the areas, making it look like it's been abandoned for years. This concept would still be utilized if Raccoon City was not completely destroyed. I imagine that the city would look a lot like how it did in Biohazard 4D Executor. Zombies could appear to be completely decayed. Hunters would have a much more ferocious appearance. The air would be clouded with smoke and grime. Maybe certain areas of the city's air would be too contaminated to enter unless you wear a hazmat suit. There's also a possibility that those infected with the G-Virus would continue to mutate and adapt to the environment appearing even more gruesome than what we've seen before. Since Capcom has been remaking the series, then maybe changing Raccoon City's fate would be the best way to keep the series alive. Have you ever bothered to stop the progress and just sit down and read some of the files and diaries that you found? If so, then you'll realize that some of them have some really creepy things to share. I found so many of them to be really creepy, so today, to celebrate the month of October, I will share with you all 10 of the creepiest diaries in Resident Evil. Also, some may not be diaries and simply notes or memos, but they are pretty much categorized as part of the diaries. But before we begin, I'd like to give a shout out to Max Jr., the skittish leaderboard, hey David here, Katsuya Takaesu, the great Saiyaman games, Revisory Apple 49 and Creepy Hunter 5. I hope you all enjoy this month and these upcoming videos because here we go. Also with most of these diaries I will begin by reading them out loud.
for those that are not too long. So now let's begin. Number 10, Management Trainee's Diary. What is it that Director Marcus is researching all the time? And what's with his weird interest in leeches? Interest? Seems more like love at times. Rumor has it that there's something dangerous about those leeches. It is true that when Dennis just touched one, he got ill with a fever. Again, today, there were those horrible moans beyond that door. Let sleeping dogs. No way I will go near them. Even if the director tells me, I no want to end up like Dennis. That poor bastard, scratching and scratching, makes me itch just watching him. I must maybe go if can, but too. Dennis gone, I go hungry. Number nine, I know that there is a puzzle with the statues. On April 6th, the chief screams at her for touching the statue. The next day, she hears about the art pieces he's been collecting and how much they're worth. Then on May 10th, she sees the chief holding a painting of a naked person being hung. This is possibly the start of the chief's insanity since he literally becomes an insane person when you meet him in the game. Number eight, Jill's diary. Jill's diary can be found only in Resident Evil 3 Nemesis by collecting every single file in the game. Jill's diary is too long for me to read out loud and it doesn't really tell a creepy story. She expresses how even though she escaped the nightmare, she can still hear the screams of her teammates as zombies rip through their flesh. Then she hears how Chris has changed him. He is causing a lot of trouble with the police members. At one point he punched a man for accidentally spilling coffee on him. I believe the creators were thinking of giving Chris a different ending and make him become something more than just the buff hero of Resident Evil. That is the creepy tone of this diary. Number 7, Director's Diary. September 10th, these patients suffer from gangrene and congestion of their blood at first. Then their mind slowly deteriorates. In the end, there is nothing left of their mind. When that happens, even mercy killings seem pointless. After all, they are already dead. This disease is unlike anything I have ever witnessed. Once the patient's mind is gone, they become flesh-hunger monsters and act like wild animals who are on some type of bloodlust. September 18th, another patient has been admitted to the hospital. He is showing symptoms of the first stages of the disease at this point, but I haven't been able to sleep at all these past few days. I refuse to let these patients become zombies. I am not just an ordinary citizen, I am a doctor. Even if I die, my clinical charts will contribute to finding a cure. September 26th, we lost most of the doctors and staff during the battle against the zombie patients. It's impossible to maintain the hospital under these conditions. And